The radio signal had stopped moving three hours ago. That's when biologist Ian Bertoshek knew something was terribly wrong. His team trudged through the December swamp, following the coordinates of a tract, Burmese python, a 13-foot male they'd been monitoring for six breeding seasons. These scout snakes, equipped with transmitters, usually lead researchers straight to massive females during mating season. But today, the signal was completely still. When they finally reached the location, the team fell silent. The python wasn't alive, and it hadn't died peacefully. The body was crushed, literally flattened in sections, with the spine broken in multiple places. Deep impressions marked the remains, evidence of devastating force. Force powerful enough to destroy a snake capable of killing alligators. Bartoshek knelt beside the carcass, examining carefully. No poison. No crocodilian bite marks. And the body was scattered, pieces dragged across the ground, as if something planned to return later. This was done by something big, one researcher whispered. Something really big. But what? In the Everglades, Burmese pythons have reigned practically unopposed for decades. What could possibly hunt one of America's most feared invasive predators? Before we reveal what killed this snake, let me ask you something. If you're enjoying this mystery, hit that subscribe button right now. Because what comes next is going to surprise you. Burmese pythons were introduced to Florida as exotic pets in the 70s and 80s. Some escaped. Others were deliberately released. Then Hurricane Andrew hit in 1992, destroying a breeding facility and releasing hundreds more into the perfect environment. Without natural predators, these snakes exploded in numbers. Today, estimates range from tens of thousands to possibly 300,000 pythons in the Everglades and they're devastating everything. Studies show small mammal populations have dropped between 90 and 99 percent in some areas of Everglades National Park. Deer, raccoons, rabbits, rare birds, even six-foot alligators have been found inside pythons. These snakes grow up to 20 feet long, weigh over 200 pounds, and are perfect ambush predators. Their constriction force can crush bones and collapse lungs in minutes. Since 2000, over 22,000 pythons have been manually removed. But that's just a fraction of the total population. The Everglades seemed lost. Until something unexpected happened. The ecosystem began to fight back. Back at that cold December morning, Bertoshek's team set up cameras around the python's remains. They needed to know what had done this. Days later, the footage revealed the answer. Something emerged from the trees. Something powerful. Something that changed everything they thought they knew about this invasion. It was an American black bear. A 200-pound native predator had discovered a new food source. The camera captured the bear returning to the kill site, sniffing the air and claiming its meal. And this wasn't the only case. Shortly before, another scout python had been found dead after a cold snap, also showing evidence of a bear attack. But how does a bear kill a giant python? The answer lies in temperature. Burmese pythons are cold-blooded. They depend on external heat to function. When a cold front hits South Florida, these normally fast snakes become slow, lethargic, vulnerable. During breeding season, males are constantly moving, searching for females. They're exposed, away from warm burrows. When temperatures drop, they can't defend themselves. Meanwhile, black bears maintain full strength and agility in the cold. For a bear with jaws that crush skulls and paws that break bones, a slow python is an easy, substantial meal. As Bartoshek explained, the ecosystem is rebalancing itself. It's fighting back. Native predators are recognizing Burmese pythons as a new food source and exploiting their vulnerabilities. Bears aren't alone in this fight. In December 2022, researchers documented a 25-pound bobcat decapitating a 13-foot, 50-pound python. 
The cat took advantage of the same vulnerability, cold weather slowing the snake, and delivered a quick, precise attack to the head. Cottonmouth snakes, venomous vipers native to Florida, are attacking where pythons are most vulnerable, the nests. A female python lays up to 100 eggs. When hatchlings emerge at just 16 inches long, they're perfect prey for cottonmouths. Researchers even found a cottonmouth that had eaten a young python with a surgically implanted transmitter. The X-ray showed the python's spine and transmitter inside the native snake's stomach. And then there are the true kings, American alligators. These apex predators, some weighing a thousand pounds, have been observed swimming with dead pythons in their mouths. Young pythons are easy food for alligators. Adult pythons can swallow six-foot alligators. It's a constant battle where size determines survival. Hawks attack young pythons from above. Florida panthers, though rare, are powerful enough to kill adult snakes. Even other native venomous snakes feed on python hatchlings. What we're witnessing is rare. An ecosystem learning, adapting, evolving in real time to combat an invasion. For years, pythons had absolute advantage. No predators. No competition. But Everglades natives didn't surrender. They observed. They learned. They discovered weaknesses. Each successful kill isn't just one less python, it's knowledge being transmitted. Bears teach their cubs. Bobcats share hunting techniques. It's Darwinian evolution accelerated. Let's be realistic. Tens of thousands of pythons still inhabit the Everglades. They continue reproducing and killing native wildlife. The damage is severe. But for the first time in decades, there's hope. Nature is resilient. When native predators get the chance to adapt, incredible things happen. Perhaps in a few generations, bears, bobcats, alligators, and other natives will recognize Burmese pythons not as unbeatable invaders, but simply as another food source. Maybe balance can be partially restored. For now, every bear that crushes a python, every bobcat that decapitates an invasive snake, every cottonmouth that devours hatchlings, it's a small but significant victory for the home team. The Everglades are fighting back, and the fight has just begun. If you enjoyed this story of ecological resistance, leave your like, subscribe if you haven't already, and tell us in the comments what you thought. And since you made it this far, I have a special video waiting for you right on the screen. You won't regret it. See you next time.